good all things in life. In the name of the Father who created us, the Son that redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit that dwells with us. Amen. Amen. There's a story that's told by William Yule, Mule of Yale Divinity School. He talks about going to Virginia and visiting an old home, an ancestral, ancestral home that had been in the family since colonial time. And he's being led around the house by the last living descendant. And the woman takes him from room to room, and he is amazed by the architecture. Finally, they walk into the living room, and above this beautiful stone fireplace, he notices a musket. And he asks the woman, can I take that down and take a look at it? She looked at him and said, no, that would not be safe. You see, it is loaded and prepared to fire. My great-grandfather kept it there in constant readiness for the moment that he might strike a blow for the freedom of the colonies. Professor Mule looked back at her and said that he died before the revolution came. She looked at him and said, no, he lived to a ripe old age and died in 1802. But he never had confidence in George Washington. You see, he knew him as a boy and didn't believe that he could ever lead an army. Thomas Wolfe once said, you could never go home. In our gospel today, Jesus goes home. He goes home to Nazareth, the place of his childhood, and experiences the truth of Wolfe's words. In Mark's gospel, in the chapters leading up to today, Jesus has been doing marvelous things, stilling a storm, healing a man possessed by demons, healing a woman with a hemorrhage, and restoring a little girl to life. Crowds flocked to him, and Mark tells us that the people were overcome with amazement at the wonderful things that he was doing. But then he went home. He came to Nazareth, where he began to teach in the synagogue. Nazareth, as you will remember, was his hometown, the place where he grew up. <coughs> he was born in Bethlehem, but raised in Nazareth. As a man, he moved to Capernaum, and there's no telling how long it has been since he's been back to Nazareth. But now, he was traveling around that area, and he decided to go home. And you would think that the people there would have welcomed him gladly with a ticker tape parade, with banners and balloons, with hosannas and hurrahs, a hometown boy that made good, but they didn't. The other people from the other towns were bowled over by his teaching because he taught as one having authority and not as the scribes. There was never anything boring about Jesus' sermon. He taught with compassion and love. And when he spoke, it was as if he was drawing back the curtain so that he could see into heaven. And on this day, when he taught the synagogue in his whole town, Mark tells us that the people were astonished, but not in a good way. They didn't say, that's the most wonderful teaching I've ever heard. They said, who is this guy? We know him. He's a carpenter, the son of a carpenter. We know his family. Who does he think he is? And they took offense at him. Mark goes on to tell us that because of their lack of belief and faith, Jesus could not work mighty deeds. He returned home to a place in his childhood to the people who know him best as a boy, and he came back a changed man and those who knew him rejected him because they failed to see what was right before them. The people of Nazareth recognized Jesus in their midst, but they didn't recognize the Lord in their midst. And so they took offense.
and they miss the blessing. In our lives, sometimes we don't see what's right in front of us. We see everything around it, but not the most obvious thing. Leonardo da Vinci spoke of three classes of people. Those who see, those who see when they are shown, and those who do not see. Today, my brothers and sisters, we are all called to be people who see, not only with our eyes, but with our hearts. For true faith requires that we believe what we cannot see with our eyes, but we know to be true in our hearts. That is our challenge, to see and accept and believe what was not, we have not seen, and to know the words of scriptures as truth and to live them. It's quite a challenge. To know the words of scripture as truth and to live them. Remember when Jesus appeared to the disciples after he had been crucified and he makes his way into a locked room and Thomas wasn't there and the other disciples tell Thomas when he comes back, we've seen the Lord. And Thomas says, I will not believe until I can put my finger into his, the nail marks on his hands and my hand into his side. And then Jesus returns. And he looks to Thomas and he says, do it. Put your finger in the nail marks on my hands and put your hand in my side. Thomas looks at him and says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says something to each and every one of us gathered here today. He says, blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. That is what our faith is about. That is what we are called to in today's gospel. My brothers and sisters, we live in a skeptical age, an age where people require proof before putting their trust in an ideal. To have faith is to rise above skepticism. To have faith requires eyes that can see, a heart that is willing, and an open mind to the reality that is often right in front of us. Faith is a gift from God, a gift that has to be accepted. No one can give us faith. We have to accept it as an individual. God does not force himself upon us. He calls to us and he waits for us to answer. At a church, there is a painting by the artist Holman, Holman Hunt that illustrates what it is that we are talking about. The picture shows Jesus at a door, knocking. When Hunt showed the, first showed the picture to his friends, one of them saw that he had forgotten something. He said, you put no handle on the door. Hunt looked at him and replied, the handle is on the inside. We must open the door to Jesus. That is the truth. We must open the door to Jesus to accept the gift of faith that is offered. Faith is a powerful tool that we have. It gives us hope. It gives us purpose. It gives us life. We have an obligation. It's one thing to have faith. But God calls us to so much more. At the end of the Gospel, Mark explains what we are to do with the gift of faith that we have accepted. He tells us that Jesus gathers the twelve. And he sends them out on a mission, two by two. On this mission, Jesus tells them to go armed with nothing but their faith, to enter towns and accept hospitality offered, and give peace to those who accept them, and hear their message, a message that tells of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, that Jesus will fulfill. Jesus tells us today that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. And he calls each and every one of us be laborers in the harvest, a harvest of faith and love that is Jesus' ministry on this earth. 
Today, we are called to take the faith that is ours and to go out as evangelists, not necessarily going door to door, but rather evangelists that are examples to those around us by the way we live our lives, by our example. Today, Jesus calls each one of us to go out and spread the good news, to have the light of our faith fill the darkest corners of this earth, to evangelize. We are called to live our lives in Christ so that through our joy, others may find him in the same way that we did. Our example is all that we need in the harvest. We are called to use the most powerful tool that we have. As disciples of Christ, we must live our faith. Simply going through the motions is not enough. We must have the courage to live what we believe, to become an example by our actions, not just our words, to have the courage to be different in a world where conforming to the current trend is considered normal. It is a challenge, a challenge for each and every one of us, but we can do it. Remember, Jesus said he sends us two by two. We never walk alone. We always have a brother, our brothers and sisters beside us. A loaded musket hangs above a fireplace in a Virginia home. It symbolizes a desire for freedom, a freedom that its owner never thought George Washington could achieve because he knew him as a boy. Jesus went to Nazareth on that day over 2,000 years ago and was rejected by people because the people could not see beyond the boy that they knew. That boy whom the people could not see beyond is Jesus Christ, the only Son of God who won salvation for all of us by giving himself on a cross. Today, Jesus comes to this church. He comes with his arms open, and he invites us to a life of faith, faith in God. He calls us to see with eyes of faith, to believe even in the things that we cannot see. He comes and knocks on the doors of our hearts. All we need to do is open the door and allow his grace and love to penetrate us. If we just open the door, we will do mighty deeds in his name, and we will have peace in our lives. If we let him in, he will send us out as examples to a world that needs the love and compassion that comes from faith. My brothers and sisters, the Lord is knocking. What will you do? Amen. Amen.